Hi everyone. In this vlog, we will use OpenCV to detect moving objects in a video. This technique is very useful while processing videos that come from stationary cameras like CCTVs for traffic, malls or offices. If we can detect moving objects on a frame, we can then run additional processing like face recognition in offices or ANPR in traffic only on the frames that have moving objects or even better only on those moving objects. We can then discard the frames that have no moving objects, thus reducing the amount of computation we need. Okay, let's get started. I am going to share my screen now. Okay, uh, we will, so this is the notebook that we will use for this picture, uh, for this uh, blog. Uh, this notebook is available in the GitHub link given in the comments. You can go there and take it directly. So in this notebook, as we said, we will demonstrate techniques to detect moving objects in a video from example, a CCTV camera. The assumption is that this camera is fixed and does not move. What we'll do, we do the following steps. We will first estimate the background with what is called median filtering. We will show how to remove the background from a picture. Then we will do blurring and thresholding techniques that enable us to detect edges. Then we'll detect contours and bounding boxes. In the end, we will then implement the whole process on a video and create a final video for you to see. Okay, that's the way. Step one. Let's import the videos. So we're going to use NumPy and CD2, the two tools that we will use extensively in this. Uh, we're going to use matplotlib for just printing uh, the images in this video. Uh, we're just setting a random seed 42. Uh, we're going to use this routine that helps, that ensures that we see the colors, the right colors in matplotlib. Uh, we've used this again, we've used these uh, this function in our previous videos. You can look at those for references. Okay, first thing we're gonna look at is the video. So our input video is this, looks like this. We're gonna look at this and, yeah, this is what our input video looks like. It's pretty large. And as you can see, it's, it's an overpass camera and there are vehicles, cars, and trucks, etc., moving on this road. And we will try to detect the background and then the moving images on this video. Okay, that's what we're gonna do. Let's go down. So our first step is to extract the background in a video. And to extract a background, we will use filtering techniques. Uh, what we'll do is we will take a few random frames from the video and then find the median of it. And so what we're doing is we kind of find the median, uh, the median at every point. Note all pictures are essentially RGB arrays. So we can find the median or the average uh, of a set of pictures. Now, after running this filtering, median filtering, what you will see is that we will effectively get no vehicles on the road. We'll see how that happens, okay. And uh, again, note this works if the camera is fixed and the camera is not moving and you only have so your fixed background and you have something like vehicles or pedestrians moving in it. So what we'll do is first, we'll take the video in a video stream and get 30 random frames. And we're gonna save these frames in an array called frames. Okay, so this is how we first capture the video. We create a video stream that captures the video. And next, what we're gonna do is we are going to take 30, we're gonna, we, we are basically finding, creating 30 frame IDs uh, for this, in the, in, in the we got to, so basically each frame ID corresponds to a particular frame in the video. So we're gonna create 30 of them. Then we will create an array to save the frames. And what we're doing here is that we're just taking the, the appropriate frames, so 30 random frames, and we're saving it in this array. 
Now we'll do is we'll calculate the median and average frames for these frames. And since all images are essentially NumPy arrays, we can use existing NumPy functions to easily calculate the averages and medians. So now if I just do calculate median by using NP median and uh, by setting axis zero, which is essentially the time axis, I can, and then when I print my median frame, as you can see, I have the background without any vehicles. So I've essentially filtered out all moving vehicles from my images. You can similarly get a filter of using the average uh, instead of the mean, but usually the median does a better job of eliminating outlier noise. And therefore we prefer the, we will prefer median filtering. We'll use the image from median filtering for our further processing. So what we have done now is we have removed all the, uh, we've got the background image. Now we'll do is we will process a single frame. So in one single picture to show the steps that we need to do, the next steps that we need to do to remove, just to identify moving objects. So let's take one sample frame, uh, which is, so we had saved all, we'd save 30 frames in our frames directory. We're gonna take one random frame and we're gonna see it. So as you can see the random frame, we have a few cards that are moving. So what we'll do is all these filtering techniques, they work better if we work with grayscale images. So we will convert both the median image and a sample image to grayscale. To convert an image to grayscale, we can use inbuilt CV2 features like CV2 color, give the frame of the particular image and set CV2 color to BGR to gray. So this will cover a normal, uh, a normal picture, which is a BGR picture to a grayscale picture. So first you're gonna con convert our median frame. And as you can see, our median frame is now grayscaled and we will apply a simpler grayscaling on a sample image. So we again have a grayscale sample image. Our next step, we will remove the background. So we'll remove the background for the sample by just doing uh, and again, an existing feature called ABS absolute difference. So this essentially is a subtraction. So what we're doing is we've taken a gray sample and we subtract out our, our background from it. So we just subtract it. So this gives, and once you do that, what we get is we get a ghost like image that just shows our moving vehicles and nothing else. The next step we're gonna do what's called blurring. So we're gonna use Gaussian blurring. What blurring does, it reduces noise and enables easy identification of edges. It just makes it easier. Uh, we're gonna use a small, and we can, uh, the Gaussian blur is again an inbuilt feature. In CV2, uh, we have a separate chapter that discusses different blurring techniques. You can look at, take a look at the playlist to find that one. And in case you have any doubts, you can take a look at it to see what's happening in Gaussian blur. And this is the image that what's essentially happened is that we have done some blurring, this takes out some amount of background noise and makes it easier for us to work with it. The next step you do is we essentially binarize the image. We strongly binarize the image to clearly bring out the moving parts from the uh, non-moving parts. The way it's done is we use a threshold uh, and we're gonna use something called the also threshold, which automatically determines, this basically just looks at the image and determines what's a good point, a, a good uh, thresholding point. And uh, once, once we apply it, we can see very clearly, we have our moving objects clearly lined out. You can see the outlines of the cars and the rest of the place is just basically, it's, it's darkened out essentially these are zeros and these are, uh, sorry, uh, the whites are essentially the full 255 values. And wherever you're seeing black is essentially the pixel values are zeroed out. So it makes it very easy for us to detect edges and contours, which is our next step. So in the next step, what you're doing is you're defining contours and bounding boxes. And again, CV2 has inbuilt features like uh, finding contours. So what we do is we, we we're finding contours and we with these two particular features, which will give us the external contours, the large contours that are interesting for us. In our next step, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create bounding boxes for our contours that are identified. 
So we'll create rectangles. And we will, the next thing we'll do is we'll basically uh, remove items that are in the top of our picture. So that's in the top of our picture. So we uh, say that anything where Y is greater than 200, which is over here. So we set a bar over here. So what's happened is that in our, in this particular image, we have clouds that are moving, which create noise. Uh, this, this particular tree moves a little and creates, it, it comes up as moving items. Uh, so what we can do very easily with CB2 is we can choose to have boundaries that we want to focus on and we can choose to have, uh, we can choose areas that we can disregard completely. So for example, so this is our final step where we have created bounding boxes using our thresholded pictures. So as you can notice, and I've taken those pictures, I've taken these bounding boxes and put it around uh, on our sample image for us to clearly identify items that are moving and items that aren't. And we do that by using, uh, so in our previous step, we found contours, all the contours are in this, in this array. We can loop through those contours and ask, give us the CV2, uh, open CV to give us a bounding rectangle for those contours. And all I've done is I've filtered out anything that's up in the top the top part of the image, I've asked you to discard, discard it. Otherwise, I'm creating a, a direct uh, rectangle with color 255, that's green, because it's, R, it's RGB or BGR. I get uh, 255 here, and I have a green box, a green rectangle that clearly shows me moving objects. Great, so what we have done till now is we have identified moving objects on a picture we are now going to use the same thing and apply it on a video and create a video in which we can clearly see just the move. We can clearly identify moving objects. So we, what we're going to do is we're going to save the video for us to look at it later. And uh, okay, so we are going to declare, uh, so we're going to use a CV2 functions to create an MP4 video. And this is the way we can create an MP4 video. We have to declare the name. You have to declare the type of the video, which kind of says it's an MP4 video. Uh, this is the frames per second. So we're going to use a picture of 30 frames per second. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to resize the picture to 640 to 480. We're going to make a slightly smaller picture, not very large, so that it's easier for us to view and manage. The next steps, we're again going to create a video stream. That's what we saw. And we're going to find the total count of frames using the CV2 cap prop frame count uh, functionality. This will give us the total number of frames in the picture. And which after we take out, we know there are 812 frames in this picture. So now what we do is we create a loop uh, so that it goes through all those frames. So what we're checking is we're counting the frames and we are ensuring that it is always less than the last frame. And we're gonna go through that and we're gonna read each frame one by one. Each frame, we're gonna first grayscale the same steps which we did before. Then we're gonna remove the, extra, remove the background out of it and create something what we call a D frame. The next thing, next step is to do Gaussian, Gaussian blurring to blur it. And the next step we do is to threshold it. We then identify the contours. So the same steps as we did before. And then for each of those contours, we create a bounding box, disregarding the items at the top, exactly the same. And in the end, this step will basically uh, write the, uh, write each frame into our, in, into, into the, final output video, which is called output.mp4. At the end, this, these two necessary steps are done to release our, our, uh, our input stream and our output, uh, our output pointer. Once you've done that, and if you run the whole thing together, you would basically get an image it's called output.mp4, which you can download and take a look at. So uh, I'm going to find, it's going to download it here. I think I already have a picture like that downloaded. So it's gonna do a fresh download. It won't take long. Let's give it a few seconds and it's done. Uh, 
And here we have a video with a bounding box identifying only moving objects. Okay, so that's how we can do it. So now we have taken this picture. Uh, we have taken a video, we've identified the background out of it automatically, and we have identified moving objects on it. Now, what you could do later is you can choose to run some additional processing, uh, you say some sort of detection of what type of car it is, uh, or in case if it was an uh, office, you could choose to do face recognition to find who, who the person was, etc. At the same time, you, you can choose to completely discard the entire background. What that does that it improves the accuracy of any yeah, of anything you do. It's a lot easier for you to uh, for if you're running a machine learning algorithm like YOLO or Inception, etc. It's easier if it's done on a, a small item the accuracy is much higher than if you run it on an entire video. So this way you can reduce your computational requirement. At the same time, you can increase the accuracy of your processing. Okay, thank you.